Uh, Sweden, for example, has 50% nuclear and 50% hydroelectric, so they have basically no carbon in their electricity supply. France, with 80% uh, nuclear and about 10% hydro, has, has close to 90% of its electric supply carbon-free. And that's why Sweden has the lowest per capita CO2 emission of any country in Western Europe, and that's why France has the second lowest. It's very interesting. You can, if you, if you t given sort of equal GDPs between different jurisdictions, all you have to do is look at the electricity supply. The more nuclear and hydro there is in the electricity supply, the lower the per capita CO2 emissions will be in that country or province or state. And that, that's, that's true in the United States as well. That's why states like Vermont with 66% nuclear plus hydro, Idaho with nearly all hydroelectric, those are the two lowest CO2 emitters in the United States. New York and California are up there pretty high too, uh, well up down there pretty low in terms of CO2 emissions, they're, they're in the top ranking in that they have uh, very, very low CO2. And if you look at the lowest 10 states out of, the, out, of the, out of the 50 states, you'll find that it's the ones that have the most nuclear energy, like New York and like uh, New Jersey, uh, and, and also uh, the states that have the most benign climate. That helps California a lot because they don't have the heating load or the cooling load uh, that many of the states in the Midwest and the Northeast have, for example. So there's, there's other factors at work. But by and large, jurisdictions that have the most nuclear and hydroelectric power in their electricity production are the ones that have the lowest CO2 emissions per capita.